Well, today is Saturday, so let me see. Did I remember everything? Okay, watermelons, melons, jugs of pop, uh, the big toys, targets, the folding table. Couldn't find gloves, but the cool, uh, very nice lady here at the gas station. Uh, lent, she let me have a couple, couple of gloves because there'll be a lot of garbage to clean up right i got uh, 330 mil cans of pop i got some of those uh, folding down metal things and what else did i have do i have basically yeah, not that much so the metal folding down targets big jugs uh, small cans and then uh, watermelons and pumpkins or oh, i have the uh, owls i bought a couple of owls oh yeah okay and then i have a couple of cubes i bought some funny stuff from from dollarama yesterday basically going to the public land first time first time in this jeep and so I don't have to uh, I don't have to rent a vehicle All right, found my destination. So 82 clicks, 82 clicks away. And the Jeep feels heavy because I have, a, oh, and I have the folding table. I have all kinds of things in the back there. I wanted to bring, um, my gongs but to mount them you need you need the t-posts that i have and actually yesterday i used the metal saw to to shorten one of these uh, t-posts and man it was hard but probably in five minutes i did it and still it's too big To, to fit inside like the um, the folding table fit inside even with the with the rear seats up right it's like a beautiful you know that's one of those folding tables where not just the legs fold but also the table itself folds in half and then when you open it it's like six feet tall six feet long you know beautiful I didn't even know they make these and then a friend of mine says yeah no no he says don't buy the one don't buy the one uh, that doesn't fold because then all it could fit is like I don't know four foot long table so now I have six So I'm going to do two videos, right? So this will be just basically the road trip. We'll talk about things kind of like что вижу, о том пою. And then the second video I'll do about the actual uh, shooting. Two mods are coming. There's no way to stop the progress, so. <laughs> uh, 
ordered the first one basically this I, I had to go I'm telling you um, it's so useful to have a YouTube channel with over 3,000 videos right so I go back seven eight ten years and I see my handsome mug when I was like 20 kilos lighter which gives me um, you know gives me motivation to lose weight by the way today we are at 191.8 191.8 uh, pounds in socks so probably without socks I'm like 190 I think so I need to bring it down to 185 at least because technically right now my weight for 181 centimeters or like 5.11.5 it's considered a beast <laughs> so yeah one interesting thing about the the sky is that you know when you do this um, when you just touch the lever to indicate the turn like all previous vehicles I know they only give you three taps like three clicks like tick 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 right this one gives you five which is actually cool you know uh, and so yeah I went back to look at my videos and I owned a couple of very similar cars in the past except they were Mazdas right so I had a Mazda uh, 2012 Mazda 3 uh, 2 liter engine just like this one except I think it had like 150 horsepower and that one was 5 speed manual I still remember and what I did on that car is I changed the exhaust because it had the same as, as this car has a huge suitcase in the back there you know like you go underneath there's a there's a single pipe of course nobody does a real dual exhaust anymore it's just a single pipe comes from the engine and then near there's some kind of a strut or support there they just squash the pipe to create more more room and so instead of like let's say two and uh 2.25 inches that pipe becomes like i don't know 1.75 in that particular spot i i hate when they do that and then that single pipe goes into like this kind of size like no bs like i don't know what is it three feet three feet huge muffler three by by one and a half i don't know why do you need such a huge muffler for such a small engine and this exactly the setup they used on mazda it was that huge suitcase as i call it in the very back and then the suitcase had two little outlets right out of the Yeah, and that suitcase had two outlets right from the muffler right like this long and so I went in and I changed it to a better muffler and then I actually changed it to use the right lane to take the Alberta 201 West ramp to a Y so I didn't even know that this was possible but I went to a nice shop and I said continue for one kilometer I said, can you give me any ideas? And they said, oh yeah, we can do a Y connector here on the main pipe and then we can install two smaller mufflers, you know, instead of that huge one. And so I installed uh, Spintech, Spintech 9000. And I remember right away, I noticed with that little engine, like the, the, the sound, of course, you cannot get the V8 sound. It sounded more like one of those, you know, Hondas when they add a huge huge muffler but it did add some nice bass to the sound but most importantly in 400 meters merge onto stony trail northeast alberta 201 west the car became much quicker like the throttle response became much quicker it became faster like this guy can you believe this truck just pushing me into the water. Continue on Alberta 201 West for 19 kilometers. Like this lane ends, and he right away he went into the left lane and tried and tried to pass me. 
Sterling truck with uh, with a trailer. Not nice. So this is 201 bypass around Calgary. Yeah, and so I did. Uh, I changed the uh, the air filter. I just put in KNN. You know the same filter that goes on the air box but then and I changed the muffler and then after that I found uh, air intake like it was not easy for Mazdas you know there's not that many performance parts but so I did the exhaust and I did the intake and I'm telling you the car became much more fun to drive like no BS and it didn't cost that much but now I don't want to deal with the uh, air intake because I I just hate cleaning those things but the regular flat filter it's okay you know they last like I I, found, I called the parts department yesterday at Eastside Dodge and confirmed that this car with a 2 liter turbo actually uses the same air filter as the previous year 2.4 liter uh, regular engine you know it's the same part right and so I went to the KN website and I was able to cross-reference because they didn't have they didn't show the filter for this 23 Jeep but they showed the one for 22 a regular one compass and so yeah I called um, called oh what is that that's uh, Komatsu I think Cabelco no the excavator I'm looking at the big excavator there I moved one of those on my truck and so yeah and so now I ordered that filter and actually I opened the hood and it was funny that usually the air filter box right it just has clips usually there's no screws or bolts like this one has five uh, two and a half inch long screws man it took me forever to unscrew them but I just opened the lid slightly to, to look and the filter to confirm that it's the same shape as what I ordered but I know right away with this k &N, I really like them you, you know these flat ones they're much better at filtration they give you more power and I remember when I did this on the Mazda the sound the sound changed you know like the exhaust sound even just with the filter the sound like the note changed and so that's what I'm doing. The, the filter uh, I ordered yesterday uh, on Amazon. It's coming tomorrow. Uh, it's coming Sunday. Yeah, tomorrow. And then I'm not gonna do. I'm not gonna bother with the exhaust for now because that can be a bit expensive. But sometime later in the year, I do wanna change that suitcase muffler. To, to two spin tacks because again I found that video I saw how those guys did it in Hamilton Ontario with the Y and I took a screenshot so at least now I found a couple of uh, performance muffler shops here in Calgary so I want to go there and uh, show them the picture and ask them if they can do the same here because this guy is slightly different because the uh, that single pipe that comes from the engine it's not in the center of the car it's to, it's a bit to the left it's like a weird design you know so this would make the car a bit a bit quicker like especially the exhaust for sure guaranteed because I did it many times before and also It'll, it'll change the note to make it a bit more pleasant because right now there's no sound like when I start the car basically all you hear is the ticking of the bells inside the engine then I I stopped at that gas station because it's right next door to a Starbucks to get a Starbucks coffee and then I see that these guys actually the 7-eleven here on Cityscape they have you know those beans to cup machine 
I always love these. And they, of course, they're way cheaper than Starbucks. So that's where my coffee today is from. That beans to coffee machine at 7-Eleven. And the lady was like, it's an Indian couple owns that store. And she was nice enough to give me a couple of... I asked, I said, do you, do you sell disposable gloves? And she says, uh, she went with me to look at the shelf and she says no we have masks but we don't like you know this COVID anti-covid masks or like when you are a plumber or something you need a mask to protect your lungs but we don't have any any gloves and i said but do you know which ones i'm talking about and she she pulls up the box from under the counter she says yeah we use them ourselves these ones right I said, yeah, and she, and she says, well, if you're pumping gas, I can just give you a couple. And I said, no, I'm not pumping gas. I, I said, I'm going to public land and uh, they're going to be a mess. And, you know, I don't want to have my hands to be all sticky and, you know. And actually, that's why I, I brought that jug of water, not to shoot it, but to wash my hands after. But now she gave me uh, three pairs of gloves. And yesterday, I was at the Canadian Tire, son of a gun, you know, that's where I bought that uh, uh, folding table. I was at that uh, store, for sure they sell this, and I forgot. Okay, next turn is uh, in six clicks, 1A. And I'm not a big fan of that highway, 1A. Because here this is a freeway of course right but as soon as you when you change to 1a it becomes like a stop and go because it's uh, lights but that's what I need I need that 1a to get me to that uh, area northwest of, uh, of the city so in terms of work um, that's one one quote I mentioned I was working on that uh, those uh, flatbed loads right so now I do flatbeds basically open deck open deck logistics right not just heavy haul but so if you have a if you need a flatbed or step deck especially between US and Canada you know give me a shout and so that, I'm still waiting for that guy. That guy liked my quote and he says he passed it over to his customer. But I haven't heard yesterday. And today is of course a Saturday. And yesterday I was doing a lot of running around. First off I called, uh, I called the uh, record company in, in Kitchen, Ontario. The one that helped me if you saw that video, uh, forklift recovery, and these are the guys that were helping me when I had that 60-ton trailer, and they were helping me, you know, change axles, uh, uh, necks, stuff like that. The same company, and they have all kinds of trailers, including tilt and load. In three kilometers, take exit 41 toward Crowchild Trail Northwest, Alberta 1A West. Yeah, including tilt and load trailers with a winch and I realized something that I don't actually need two units I don't need a regular wrecker and and a trailer I thought you know I would pay them to bring the big wrecker lift it and put it on the trailer and I'm, wait a second these guys have tilt and load trailers with a winch and so I called them a couple of days ago I said can you do this can you pull a forklift from it's uh, I said it's stuck in the gravel there but it doesn't it's not stuck too bad uh, can you pull it on your trailer and she says yeah we have ones with wind with winches and so yesterday I um, I think Thursday I, I signed it so basically I, I I signed the contract with the auction that's it so I removed uh, pretty much most of my ads online about the forklift and I think on Facebook I wrote you know I still kept the 
I kept the ad, but I said this one is now listed on the at, at this particular auction. If you want to buy it, go there online. Take exit 41 toward Crowchild Trail Northwest, Alberta 1A West. Yeah, go there online and 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 you know bid. Okay, 1A exit 41, Crowchild Trail. That's where we're going. Take exit 41, then keep right at the fork. And so yeah, Thursday I signed uh, signed the contract, and then Friday morning I called I called keep right at the fork. I called the record company. I said I need to send you the keys to the machine because you know I don't have to be there. Even though remember before I had this issue where people were asking me to see the machine, I couldn't be there because because the manager of that storage facility said no, I cannot give out the gate code to anybody. I have to be there. I have to escort any visitors. Continue on Alberta 1A West for 34 kilometers. But when I ask him what if I'm shipping, like you know, I'm shipping it back to the auction and he says, Oh yeah, I just need to know the Give me the name of the trucking company that's coming just give me you know so i know and we'll open the gate for them all right and so yesterday morning yeah, i called uh, becca brothers now oh, they used to be called becca brothers towing now i see they changed their name to becca brothers trucking because they now they they have all kinds of trailers and on their voicemail greeting they say they can do up to 100 Seventy thousand pounds. Like they have big RGN trailers as well, you know. I'm guessing they realize the, that you can make money with those. Oh, maybe, maybe when they were helping me move all those components, like what the heck is this guy doing, you know? So they realize there's money in that, and they bought a couple of maybe used trailers. And so she gave me the address where to send the keys. And I, I typed up a sheet of instructions for the driver and I created a bill of lading showing you know the storage facility address and then uh, the auction address. Basically I use my old uh, I use my old bill of lading that I that I made up when those guys were moving the forklift from the auction to the storage facility. You know I found the bill of lading in the open office uh, format. And I just changed the address backwards, right? Like the origin became the destination, destination became the origin. But all the forklift uh, details were there, like the serial number, dimensions. Basically, that machine is like 13 feet long, about, I don't know, 55 inches wide, and about eight and a half feet tall, 18,000 pounds. And then I drove over to uh, UPS, gave them the, this big envelope. So with the uh, instructions, with the bill of lading, with uh, I also included a small envelope with a copy of my contract, like listing contract with the auction. And I sealed it and I wrote on the front, uh, please give it to the gatehouse at the auction. Oh, and they also they gave me a seller code because I asked them when I was talking to Richie Brothers. I said, "Do I have to be there?" And they said, "No, just tell your driver when they're delivering who is it for, so they, they know your name, and we'll give you a seller code, kind of like you know, like a password, right?" And so now when the driver shows up at the auction there at the gatehouse, okay, diesel 129.9 today. In Alberta, so basically dollar thirty Canadian per liter. I don't know why I still I still look at those green numbers, you know, like most gas stations here. Diesel diesel numbers are green. Yeah, the Jeep does feel heavy, you know, because that desk is heavy, all these watermelons, pumpkins, guns. But I feel it, of course it's the computer you know just like with the truck you know when you light 
empty, it's not gonna give you all the power. But when you fully load, if the computer senses that, it gives you more power. So actually now I feel more power. It's like more pleasant to drive. Uh, let's see, what am I doing? Current is seven liters per hundred kilometers. Average is 10.1. I like this setup. You see, I can change from this digital. I can do analog. And but I like this. This gives me. I'm not sure what that right one. On the right, there's a picture of the Jeep. Kind of like supposed to give you what, like my blind spots maybe. And then the next window shows what's playing now on the radio. And then speed limit is in the middle because it has the sensor that reads signs right like very cool i didn't have this on on any of my on none of my previous vehicles and then next to the current speed limit it shows the current and average fuel economy and then the last one on the left is a trip odometer so that i can reset and i forgot to do that because this is a business trip right since i'm doing a video anything re related like mileage i have a little journal in there that i'm supposed to write down the the miles on the odometer but speaking of which now we are at 495 clicks 495 which means that in five kilometers the break in for this car is officially over now look at this guy uh let me guess 130 because I'm doing 104 and that guy passed me like as if I'm standing so I hope it's not gonna be too crowded there oh man look at this I love watching these mountains man again I'm so happy that I I'm near the mountains now always wanted to live in an area like this but I thought I would end up in Montana because that was that's my favorite state in US because of the scenery but like what do you do in Montana right like as most people know that Canadians we are allowed to uh, buy property in US and we don't need a visa to cross the border just the passport but then like an idiot after six months I have to leave and go back to Canada like basically hey we don't want you here for more than six months you know you stink but if I don't do that not only that would be a violation of the American laws but if you stay away from Canada for more than six months you lose the status of the resident so you become a non-resident for tax purposes which means which you know which is okay right but what it means is that i i would lose my free health coverage okay which is honestly it's pretty much useless in canada uh if you are american and you're watching this and some people are oh man we should we should do it like they did it in canada right like a pretty much like a socialist system where the government takes care of the bill but dental is not included in this free health care and delivery to the hospital is not included which is like to me it's like so funny but that's why we have so many all our ambulances you see they all private you know at first i couldn't understand like what is this like patient delivery and it would have some kind of a, like uh, ink or llc what no ink uh name you know and that's when I realized, you know, when I was selling, I sold insurance, right, for a while. And I remember we were trying to upsell people on this, saying that, hey, yeah, you have insurance, but you never have enough, right? So you need, and plus your ambulance is not covered, your dental is not covered. But that's not the real problem with uh, healthcare here. But the real, the real genuine, like no BS problem is that there's huge lineups like you know let's say if you have some serious condition right I don't know you need like a new heart valve or something right and you go to your hospital they say yeah sure it's free you know like in US it probably costs like I don't know hundred grand right but of course everybody most 
serious people they have insurance so insurance pays for it but I know that can be expensive right depending on you know whether you have dependents or how many children stuff like that so here yeah I don't have to pay that but basically people are dying while waiting you know that's the problem so yeah it's free but what's the point of free healthcare if they cannot provide it in time you know that's the that's the issue and quite a few times actually not just once but more than once I read about cases where uh, the situation was so dire as they say right that the Canadian government paid for the freaking helicopter to take the patient across the border into US and 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 do the operation there you know, I remember specifically, I read about one girl, I think she was like, uh, she was, I don't know, like a 14, 15, a teenager. And she was dying because she needed some kind of a serious operation. And the waiting period was too long. And they couldn't, they couldn't do anything. So this was like Eastern Ontario or Quebec or something there. And so they just put her in the helicopter and they flew her to uh, upstate New York. And so she, she lived, you know? So, that, so that's the problem with that healthcare. Like, don't get me started. And then of course, taxes. Taxes are much higher than in the US. You know, income tax, sales tax. At least now I'm happy that in Alberta, we don't have, we don't have the uh, provincial tax. Like because like in Ontario, right? Ontario totally crazy. Thirteen percent sales tax on on most items, except you know like bread or milk. Like you buy a car, there's thirteen percent. You buy a house, apartment, thirteen percent. Why? Because there's a provincial tax and then there's a federal tax. Was it like seven and eight percent, right? Whereas here we only have the federal tax. So it's just 5%, which makes things much more uh, interesting for buyers, especially when you buy big items, you know? Like this area will be slow because the, this is, what is this? I forgot the name of this town, but it's such a big, you know drop here in elevation and you can see everything you can see this little town what is it Cochrane no I forgot the mountains in the distance and the speed limit first it became 80 clicks so you can pull over here and take a look if you want but there's nothing to look at oh, on the left there it's all they're building something but so first it was 80 clicks then 60 now it's 50 so basically 30 miles an hour if I was a cop, I would sit here 24 seven. Because you now, especially coming down the hill, right? It's, let's say you're driving that big truck there, that cement truck. I guarantee it that he would be doing more than 50. So I would be sitting there, there's a hotel there, with the parking lot, and just get an extra range radar then have your body because it will be difficult to get from that parking lot quickly so you have you have the spotter like a team of two you know how they do it usually there's a spotter like sitting in a like on the bridge usually right on the freeway they like sitting on the bridge overpass hiding behind the barrier and he's watching the traffic and then his body sits at the um, at the ramp, at the entrance ramp, like a mile away, and they communicate by radio. Okay, a blue jeep, blue jeep. Oh, that guy is doing, I think, you know, 200 miles an hour. Roger that, Peter. We'll get him. And this, I've been coming here, what, since October? It's still the same. They're building something. You know, what are they building over there? Like just one lane. 
with these uh, nice concrete barriers that uh, I like so much. See, like now I'm picking up speed. There's no, there's just the sound from the engine, like literally. Well, I cannot hear my, my, uh, man, gets narrow. That's why on the left here, I see tire marks everywhere. Like if, if I was driving a truck here, it would be a bit scary. And I think I wouldn't, I wouldn't have made it if I had uh, my 60 ton here. Okay, that's it. What are they building? The building's probably some, gonna be some either uh, hotel or something. So yeah, it's just the engine sound. So we're gonna change that. And plus, like I said, honestly, like I know many people don't believe in this, but I did these mods so many times, you know, on my Ford F-150, that Mustang V6, 300 horsepower, and uh, Dodge Ram, these two Mazdas, Mazda 3 uh, with 2 liter and then 2.4 liter engine. And then Challenger, the, the Scat Pack 392, right? That one I modified to the point where <laughs> it, it became too loud. You know, I admit, you know, I'm not afraid to admit. Sometimes you get carried away. So the Mustang was too loud. <laughs> But because yeah on the mustang that v6 and that many people were snickering at but that thing it was 305 horsepower right and i put an x pipe on it i put um long tube headers and man that thing became loud i remember when i was i was driving to florida uh, you know when I was waiting for my uh, what was I think I was waiting for my uh, Mack truck Yeah, when I when I sold the international To the body in New Jersey Who's that guy who gave me that hat? And he says oh, I cannot Drive it across the border. They wouldn't give me insurance I said hey, no problem. I still have I still have uh, You know it, it was plated to uh, Landstar, right? I said, I still have Landstar plate, Landstar signs on the doors. And I went across the border and brought him that international, yellow international. We met near New York City. The guy was so happy. This was like his first truck. He paid me 18500 And they put me on the bus. And I was like really impressed that the bus from Manhattan to Toronto was like 80 bucks <laughs> like what <laughs> and then I grabbed the I missed the local bus from Toronto to Cambridge and I hired a taxi back then I didn't know about uber and the taxi cost me 200 Canadian <laughs> and so yeah when I was waiting and then I ordered that uh, Mack truck and as, as while I was waiting I remember I decided to go to uh, Florida and that's when I that's when I realized that that yeah Mustang was just you know you drive all day like I didn't drive too much I drove like you know maybe like five six hundred clicks a day because it's a vacation right but your head you know your head is like this size after a day of driving because it was it was so loud but it was very fast like as soon as you touch gas that thing would go you know and that one what did I trade that one in for uh, oh yeah, yeah, I traded that one for a Challenger 392 and I swore that I would not touch that one. I I kept my word I think for one year. I didn't do any mods on that Scat Pack 392 for one year and then I went ahead and I pretty much did the same thing I did with the Mustang except that one already had the X-Pipe. <laughs> Yeah, and then I got the Dodge Charger 5.7, very nice car, except it attracts uh, too much attention, believe it or not. That's one of those guys, the thieves try to break in, they damage the windows, put scratches on it. Honestly, after that, 
I, I felt like violated. I didn't want to drive that car. But, and also the color. The color was gray, like a typical police color. And, uh, and quite often I would notice on the freeway people were afraid to pass me because I thought I was a cop. You know, it was, it was getting an, uh, annoying. But that car allowed me 5.7 V8, right, with a, what was it, eight speed, eight speed auto, allowed me to do that, I don't know, once in a lifetime road trip, right, where I went from Cambridge to Buffalo, New York, crossing to US, and then I crossed the entire US pretty much, you know, through New York, Indiana, PA, you know, um, Illinois, Iowa, all the way west to Montana. So I visited all those parks. So there's a bunch of videos about this on my channel, like Yellowstone. Uh, there were two more, two more over there as well, like in the south, North Dakota, South Dakota, that area. And then I finished with the with Yellowstone. No, I finished with the Glacier Park. Glacier Park in uh, Kalispell, Montana. And then I drove north, crossed the border, went to Calgary. Tried to sell that car myself. Nobody would buy it, but so I had to, uh, you have to take it to a shop, special shop to do an inspection because all out of the province vehicles have to be inspected before you slap uh, Alberta plate on them. And I remember I was afraid they would make me uh, reinstall the factory exhaust because that car was so loud nobody said anything you know actually I called uh, I did oil change on that one at Eastside Dodge when it, I still had the Ontario plate because you have three months you can drive with the out-of-province plate and I asked him I said you guys do uh, do you do uh, out of province inspections because not all shops are licensed for that you have you need to have a special form you pick up at the DOT office or the registry and you take it to the licensed shop and they do like a full inspection and these guys said yeah sure and even though they did an oil change on my car so they knew it was loud and uh, like I remember the lady was laughing at the, the clerk you know the, the service writer was oh man it's so loud because you go inside the building there, you know, like right next where all these service riders sit, you park your car right next to them inside a building. It's like a really cool setup, but inside the building, you can imagine how loud that car was, you know? And plus, of course, you know, I cannot have it too loud now because I live in the condo, right? There's people around me with uh, honestly very poor sound insulation. Like, I'm watching TV in my living room and I know behind the wall, it's a bedroom of the next apartment. I can hear somebody snoring, I swear to God. I thought it was, I was going crazy. But, you know, when I watch TV, I just threw like a, a little something on the floor and I just put a, pillow against the the wall and I watch TV because my bed of course is in the bedroom and you get tired sitting in a in a chair even though I have a couple of very nice chairs so I just lie on the floor on that you know big mattress with a sleeping bag and I just watch TV and right behind you know on the other side of the wall somebody's like very light sound but it's snoring you know like quiet and then if I go into my bathroom, I can hear water. The guy above me, because he also has a bathroom in the same spot, of course, I can hear water dripping on his, you know, in the top, in the top, there's a tap, right? And he has a leak. And actually, I remember when I was a bit tipsy, I went above there to investigate why they're so loud. Like I can hear water and in the morning, uh, I hear them walking and they're not just walking across the floor. They're like running Boom, 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 boom. And I remember I, I got drunk one day. I finally had enough So I went up and I said, hey, I'm your neighbor from downstairs. Like, 
what, <laughs> what are you guys doing over here? You know, I, I'm surprised the guy didn't punch me in the face, but I just wanted to see who these guys are. It turns out it's a young couple, but this guy in the morning, he just, like he's running. I'm pretty sure he's set up in the apartment is the same as mine so when you open the entrance door you have your little kitchen area and then the living room right and in the morning they keep running like honestly like like the, not running but you know like very fast walking and I can hear this you know like this like basically I'm telling you like because all these buildings right just same as in the States they use like plywood you know I remember I was laughing my head off when I just came from Russia in 97 they never built over their houses like this. You use bricks, you use concrete, right? You use timbers. Nobody was using plywood. And then I show up, I, I arrive in Canada and I see this uh, skeleton of, um, of a new... In 800 meters, turn right onto Forestry Trunk Road, Alberta 40 North. Signs for Benchlands Wipers. Yeah, I see, you know, when they're building the building, right? You can see the, the frame. And I was really surprised to see that they're using basically plywood, you know? And that's what it is. It's uh... Turn right onto Forestry Trunk Road, Alberta 40 North. Signs for Benchlands Wiperus. It's very noisy. Continue on Alberta 40 North for 24 kilometers. All right, Viperus, 17 clicks. So basically, this is what we take, Highway 40. So bye-bye 1A. This is now a two-lane road, Highway 40. And we are, I think, uh, yeah, 24 clicks away. So we're gonna call it a uh, road trip in the Jeep. Well, we're gonna get like uh, 1,500 views. Amazing. Yeah, the road here is a bit rough so speed limit is 80 clicks an hour what do you think this guy is doing I'm 75 he is double at least 150 basically 100 miles an hour <laughs> as my late father used to say what taki beautsa you know how all the people they have a uh, like I remember I was laughing my head off you know when I was a kid we were always laughing with my younger brother because my late dad and my mom they used to you know when they like in their 50s right 50s late 40s they used the same expressions all the time you know like what такие бьются that's who gets killed or you know все как у людей everything like you know what other guys have you know like hey we we basically we're doing good we have a car we have an apartment so basically they had like 10 or 20 of these uh, phrases they used all the time like the you know <laughs> basically a very limited vocabulary I'm you know I'm sorry to say and so but now I remember them kind of like with a smile you know because that's what made them um, kind of like you know memorable and funny but of course they didn't realize that it was funny like to them it was like regular way of speaking but <laughs> basically my parents didn't show much in terms of you know creativity when they're talking basically same uh, proverbs you know same sayings all the time so anyway I think we're gonna maybe we're gonna finish it here Maybe you guys want to see. Um, so I do have a spare battery, right? So maybe I'll show you. We'll go to the entrance, to that scary bridge. I think that's where we're gonna finish it. Yeah. And sorry about the noise. That I have that stuff in the trunk. That's what uh, making noise. Actually, time passes you know I, I'm glad that I'm doing this because usually it's like a long drive you know like it's 80 what is it 80 85 clicks 
but because of all these lights it takes forever it's not a fast route but when I'm doing the video I'm talking it's kind of like listening to audiobook or something right or music time flies much faster so I appreciate you guys hanging out with me and helping me uh, kill the time oh by the way so I'm bringing the GoPro of course and then I'm uh, I, I brought my Nikon camera so I'm gonna use two cameras I'm gonna set up Nikon next to me to show me from the side when I'm doing the activity and I, I brought a big tripod I have like a massive tripod and then I have this GoPro with a fresh battery and I have a little tripod that I'm gonna put right next to the table with uh, all these uh, watermelons and uh, owls and uh, jugs and cans of pop and then we're gonna we're gonna run the GoPro at 120 frames a second so that I can use a uh, slow motion after and one in interesting thing is that I find that you know I bought little um, like a Y like this right so you can like the it, it, small tripod and then at the top it has like a Y with uh, some rubber so that's where you put your you know rifle or your shotgun but it's very small and I and I saw I saw similar but much bigger things selling at the Cabela's or Best Pro Shop and I look at them and they look like actual photo tripods and I'm like, wait a second, it's probably the same connector over there, same little bolt that you used to hook up a camera. And I have a nice monopod, I have this big tripod, so so I unscrewed this Y from that um, gun uh, tripod. And sure enough, it uses the same connector, the same um, diameter uh, hole as the actual photography tripod or monopod. And so I have this nice fancy carbon fiber monopod so I just attached that Y and so now I'm pretty sure I'm gonna be much more accurate because I, I brought some uh, rubber mats to put on the floor and I'm gonna kneel but I'm gonna instead of using my elbow and resting it on the knee I'm gonna use the uh, monopod and I can adjust it it has like three or four uh, sections that I can make it taller lower you know and it, it has, has that Y and I'm just gonna put the gun right there it's gonna be beautiful because I don't use that monopod that often anyway mostly I like using uh, small grips you know for the GoPro when I do a video so, well I'm five clicks away from the entrance saw a deer and I think the other one was uh, like a bigger one with the with the horns you know not an antelope but what's the other one elk I think it was an elk so I just went through a uh, Waiparus village with that ridiculous 30 kilometers an hour speed limit and when you enter it's like the road just go through and there's houses on both sides and it says uh, no facilities like how do they live in there like there's not a single gas station there's no stores like nothing you know just people living in the middle of nowhere in the small kind of like I'm guessing maybe people just have you know dachas you know cottages over there because you would have to drive over uh, what's the next big town that one back there with with a big hill but of course you're close to the mountains here you, there's all kinds of hiking all kinds of you know hunting you can do if you have a license and stuff like that by the people by the way some people keep asking me about hunting like what would I do with the meat right I don't have a wife I don't have a girlfriend you know I'm not gonna like 
yeah, I can get a license and, and then, okay, wait for the right season when they allow and then what? Kill a hog or, or, or a deer, what do I do with the, with, the, with the body? You know, with the meat. If I was like a farmer somewhere, right, with like huge refrigerator or something, I never ever in my life was shown how to or did myself, you know, basically uh, prepare the meat for for uh, storage. Like when you take take out all the you know bowels and skin and fur and stuff like that, I don't do that. I just really enjoy these little visits to the you know public land where it's all perfectly legal to do target practice as long as you you know find a safe spot and you clean up after yourself right that's why I'm bringing these and I have a bunch of uh, garbage bags so the plan of course is to leave everything in the same condition as it was when I arrived so usually my past visits in the mornings what is it now 8 17 in the morning here so it's 10 17 eastern time already but here it's only eight o'clock plus nine celsius so i brought a coat it's gonna be chilly in the t-shirt but usually there's one or two guys there sometimes that are shooting at the next lot but that my spot as i call it you know like i found it my first uh, visit there because there's a hill in the back and, and you can just park your vehicle right there on the grass I was even thinking maybe if I position the vehicle meters, correctly road if I position the vehicle correctly I can just shoot from the trunk you know just lie down and shoot from the trunk okay so here we go so here, once I turn, I'm gonna lose cellular coverage. Turn left, then you will arrive at your destination. And so first you here, have yeah, first here we have these little man, this crazy bridge so this is still this is not a public land this is I'm just gonna cancel this because yeah I'm gonna lose this guy's probably waiting for somebody here so usually yeah people park here but this is not actually, this is just the entrance to the public land zone, but this is not the actual public land zone. This is still private property. That's why there's uh, fences. Now look at this road. I remember when I was talking to one of these uh, public land officials, because, you know, it, it took a long time to find this place you know because I'm new to Alberta right I came here many times as a trucker but I never lived here so I know in theory yeah you can go to public land to do target practice but where do you go how do you get there and so I finally I found one guy that who's responsible for this particular area and I said hey I rented a small uh, Kia uh, it was like a small car, you know, back when I was waiting for my Hellcat. And I wasn't sure, like, look how rough it is. I wasn't sure if I can go, come here, right? And the guy says, oh, don't worry about it. It's, uh, he says, you can go a regular car. It's fine because he says, this is a municipal road. You know, they're supposed to you know keep it free of snow in the winter I'm like really so this is a municipal road <laughs> so if I listen to that guy like thankfully 
I did not follow his advice. Look at this guy. That's the guy who was standing there. Totally nuts, you know. I didn't see him behind me. I'm guessing he was he was uh, trailing behind me. Then he got mad. What an idiot! How can I drive on the road like this at at 80 clicks an hour? But yeah, this one is kind of like very rough in the summer. Like it's it's really much better to come here in winter because with the snow, when there's a packed snow. Especially now with this Jeep, I'm not I'm not afraid to um, come here in winter because I have all-wheel drive. You know, I have snow, rock, all these modes in here. But I like that it has auto mode, so it's going to detect by itself if it's uh, you know what mode to choose, right? But this is a very capable vehicle and that's why it's so rough because I'm guessing the suspension is tuned for off-road but man and so the guy wanted me to come here he says yeah it's fine in your little Kia you can um, come here <laughs> and he said this was a municipal road and actually yeah th this is a municipal road because like I said you see like the fences on the both sides I just hope I don't cut my ties here because they have these huge rocks and some of them are pretty sharp, you know? So now, I'm guessing, but in a short while we're gonna see a wreck of that Subaru that passed me. Because the way that guy drives, he's gonna end up in a ditch somewhere here. But yeah, there's another guy now behind me. So yeah, if you want to pass me, pass me. You know, like I always say when I was a truck, I say, hey, I'm not gonna be in your way. Just you want to pass me, go ahead, knock yourself out, right? But especially here with these rocks, like if you drive too fast, you're gonna throw a rock at somebody, you know? And so that was so inconsiderate of that guy when he passed me like that. He could have just you know threw a bunch of rocks at my windshield but because he was so fast he passed really quickly so like look at this so basically the advice is if you find this spot don't don't come here in the Kia okay you need a truck and why I stopped? Because I don't want to get a rock in the windshield. But actually, I'm not too afraid of that because, you know, that when they saw me this Jeep, uh, part of the deal was they gave me the extra warranty and they gave me all these fancy features like uh, free chip fixing and windshield replacement. It's all in there. And I actually, they made it part of the deal, so it was not like any extra money. Because at first, I remember I was screaming at the guy, why is there $4,800 again for five-year extended warranty? And the guy started explaining to me that that's how he had to structure it like this, otherwise the bank would not approve it. And I look at the bottom number, and the actual bottom number was lower than what we agreed on. So he did not lie. He just had to play with the numbers. You know, he had he had to increase the trading value of the Hellcat and um, add the warranty. He says, yeah, otherwise they wouldn't approve you. Because he says we cannot just show this huge, you know, gap in the trade-in and um, and the well, trade-in of your Hellcat. And what you owe he says you know they don't it's, it's too much yeah, because yeah you wouldn't give me enough money right and actually yeah some people notice right away that at first they posted that Hellcat for 119,000 Canadian and then they changed the, the price to 109 and that's exactly what Steve the sales guy said when I when I sh I, I showed him this listing at 119 and he says well, we're asking. He says it's not like we're gonna get that because we. He says we're getting a new one, 
we're getting a brand new 22 regular body challenger Hellcat just like mine but new zero kilometers and he says we're gonna price that one at 111 so he says your car it's a used car right and it has 3,000 kilometers so why would we sell it how can somebody pay us 119 and so yeah that's when they change basically if the new one is let's say 111 they change it to 109 for this used one but I mean this Jeep is very very rough on the road like this like I remember I was here many times right I was here with the uh, uh, what was here I think Dodge Ram right when I when I had that rental I was here I was here with the uh, GMC Yukon I was here with the Dodge Durango right as I was you know during winter right I, I would rent an SUV or a 4x4 pickup truck but of course again this is last time I was here it was also very rough but not like this this is really bad I cannot even like honestly I don't know how that guy in Subaru just flew like this you know, especially like a brand new car you know so anyway where the heck is that bridge oh. so this is still public property I mean private property and here we go so let's see I don't know if you guys remember last time I was here I almost got stuck because there was still there was still snow here and like I see people park like this I'm guessing they go hiking so this is the actual entrance there's a sign on the right ghost public land use zone so as soon as you go past here you're on a public land and last time when it was the the road there was super bad oh, this whole area was covered in with the RVs and I'm like what the heck why are they all sitting here you know and then when I try to go through this this is like the most scariest uh, spot in here and like this bridge in winter really scary you see people are camping here but that's why like there's a this thing in here and this area this I don't know 20 meters it was so bad we had to go here you know like the potholes were like this everybody was going over there and I remember I almost got stuck here and even now they still have um, water over there and then this is uh, interesting in winter you know it's very steep and I remember I was afraid I would get stuck so I turned on my 4x4 because I didn't trust the um, I didn't trust the uh, the auto system So now we're just going. I think it's like five minutes there to my spot. Oh, you see, people are camping. in a freaking rush like I said hey I'm not in your way right so just you want to pass me pass me just let me f let me keep filming so you know if you end up in a wreck because of a reckless driving
check the status no it's still in auto i'm guessing the system feels that it can still climb here with the auto mode and it's a good thing that i have a spare tire you know because if you cut your tires here on a rock at least have a spare tire and it's full size it's not like one of those small tires it's a full size tire but this place now is busy so probably somebody might be there at my spot over there because you see some people I'm guessing they came here Friday night probably No, but this is cool you know this is cool even though this jeep is super rough on this road but i like that now i have a vehicle that i can come here i don't have to rent anything spot very narrow like there's a hole in here so only one vehicle can come here so usually there's somebody on this side you have to stop like somebody has to stop to let the other vehicle go because two vehicles will not fit in here so so now I'm at 547 clicks so the the break-in is finished and this is a good good uh, test for my brand new Jeep and look at this this is beautiful like there's a lake on there's a river on the left and they have a sign here bridge maximum for a truck with two trailers 47 tons yeah right Like if you can, if you end up here in a truck with two trailers, you're not going anywhere. <laughs> so, but this time I might need to go further than what where I usually shoot because I think there are gonna be people in there. But there's two spots in there. So first I'm gonna look at the at my spot, and then I'm gonna go further. And if I cannot find a nice spot in there with a hill in the background, I'll just come back to the, there's another spot next to where I usually shoot. Like I never been there, but I, I, heard, I hear people shooting there all the time. It's much bigger spot. And this time I don't wanna, I don't need a large distance because I'm gonna compare uh, a Ruger versus Mossberg at short distance like maybe I don't know 25 meters so popular in the summer it's just like little clusters you know like five six cars in one spot so basically you gotta get out get out here early and I woke up at, at first I set up my alarm for six o'clock and I thought no forget it I was watching a movie uh, until 12 I said no so I changed the 
it alarmed to 6.30 and then I was moving everything into my Jeep, see like this, pickup trucks, dogs, people are cooking food. Probably, I'm guessing like that area, it's all open and nice. The, the, that whole area probably now is gonna be full of RVs and tents, I'm thinking. Because they don't care if usually that's where people shoot, right? But basically one thing I decided while I was not filming, I was just driving on this awful, awful road. I decided, yeah, I'm not coming here uh, during dry months again. It's just too rough, you know. Like, it would be one thing, it was just like dirt. You know, usually dirt, dirt roads are smoother. But this is like, you know, you're losing all your feelings, you know. Basically here you need, like my, this Jeep, I'm thinking why, one of the reasons why it's it's so rough here is because I have small tires. Like, I don't remember last time when I had a vehicle with 17 inch wheels, but that's what this thing has. And I asked the sales guy, I said, why does it have such small wheels and actually narrow tires? And he says, well, because it's rated for off-road and especially in the snow, he says, uh, a more narrow tire creates more pressure, so it, it'll, it actually help you in winter. But on a, a rough road like this, you know, you can feel every pothole because you have small tires. I miss, uh, I miss the 20 inch size, you know. Let me go over here, it seems a bit smoother. There's no rules here. You drive where you think your car will survive, you know. Yeah, this was a bad idea. <laughs> I didn't expect it to be so bad, you know, because last time I was here, uh, what was it, like May? When I almost got stuck at that bridge over there. But the, the ground was still kind of like frozen. So, okay, this is the first spot where people people shoot and look at this they put the rocks in there interesting but I think that area is open oh check this out there's a cross RIP a rip in peace somebody died here Is that my area? I think it is. But it's so so overgrown now. Okay, this is my spot. Check this out. Wow, but there's like so much stuff in here. But, it should work. I think we're good. Let's go check out why is it so overgrown like in winter it seemed uh, yeah usually that's where I'm shooting from here but look it's all like wilderness and this I see over there they have lots of um, targets 
because people are sitting over there. So th that probably like 300 meters. Whereas, whereas here, yeah, I'm not gonna, like I see a log in there. You're gonna set up like that, like maybe like 20 meters and just shoot from here. So shooting basically away from the road, shooting towards the hill. Oh yeah, I see like a nice little opening over there. So this would be perfect. Okay, so this is the end of uh, video one. Look at this, some bastards were shooting here. Left all the cartridges, the water, 